So I got a project for digital systems too. And I said, okay, let me make a stopwatch or track timer. <coughs> so when I actually made it, so let's see if it's working. Okay, this is a start button, this is a stop button, and this is the button for reset. So let me start the timing. As you can see, it's counting. And this thing counts until 1 to 100. And then it resets and counts again from <coughs> 0 to 100. Okay, let's press the stop button. It, you see it stops and stores the value. And then this is the reset button. It will reset the whole thing to zero. <coughs> and when I press the start button, it doesn't matter how many times I press it. It doesn't affect the counting. I have to press the stop button for it to stop. <coughs> and then it doesn't matter how many times I press the stop button. It still stores the same value. And I have to press the start button for it to continue from where it stopped. And then for it to reset, I have to press the stop button and reset it. Or else I can reset it while it's counting. And it's going to reset and it's going to carry on counting because I didn't stop it. <coughs> so let's go into detail for the circuit. Let me just show you what I used and what I built. I used an LM317. And I configured it to connect as a voltage regulator. You can get the circuit from the data sheet of LM317. It is the first voltage regulator circuit that I used. This is the triple five set timer circuit for giving an output frequency. And this is a triple five timer circuit. And I configure it in a bi-stable mode to give it a fixed mode of one to set it or, or to reset it, the output. And this is an A-stable mode, triple five timer circuit to give an output frequency. And then here I used 4026 IC, <coughs> which is the pulse counter IC, which uh, decodes the pulse in a seven segment display. So it's a three in one, you can say. It counts the pulse, and then that pulse in binary, it decodes into seven segment. So it's a three one in one IC. <coughs> and then I took the input from the pi table and the out, I, put, I took the output from the pi table and the output from the triple five timer circuit and I connected it to an N gate. So when the frequency is one, when the pi table, I set it to one, then when it's one and one, it gives a one output. So in this case, when it gives a one output, it counts. And then when I stop this thing, when I give a reset, it gives a zero output from the pi table circuit. When it gives a zero output, it stays a zero, and the output of the end gate is going to be a zero. Because it's a zero, it stores the value. Okay, let's go to the next one. This is the reset button. It's like a master reset. So these ICs got a reset pin. I connect that reset pin to a pull down resistor to zero. When I press this, it gives a one output because I connect the other side of the switch to VCC. When this IC's reset pin gets a one output, it resets all the ICs, all the seven segment displays to zero. Let's, and then the way I connected this thing, I connected the output, the clock, out, the clock input from the end gate, and then the clock output from this IC goes into the clock input of the second, and then the clock output of this IC goes into the clock input of the third, what happens in this process is that the input frequency, let's say I put the in input frequency of 100 hertz. So the output frequency of this one will be 1 hertz, which is going to go into the next one. The output frequency of this one is 0 0.1 hertz, which is going to the next one. And the output of that, it's going to be 0 0.01, which is 10 millihertz, <coughs> which is uh, going to be the output of that one, which is the input of the last IC. So the frequency of this 7 segment display is 100 hertz, this one is 10 hertz, this one is 1 hertz, and this one is 0 0.1 hertz. Sorry, I made a mistake at the back. I said 10 millihertz. It's not 10, it's 100 millihertz. So this is how I made the circuit, and I put the piezometer here. So it can make a sound when I start, and it can make a sound when I stop. The sound is very little. I'm not sure if you can hear it. Let me... Yeah, it's very small. I'm not sure if you can hear it. Let me just increase the voltage there and see if it works. If it's louder. 
No, because I put a voltage regulator. So even if I increase the voltage, voltage remains the same. So the sound is very little, can't hear it. But if you increase the voltage, you can hear a sound. <coughs> and then you can even use this as a track timer circuit. Okay, let me decrease the voltage there. You can even use this IC as a track timer circuit. <coughs> let's say you can put, let's say this is a track. And then you can trigger the start button. You can trigger the start button. So let's say this is a racing track. And then there's some lights here. It says three, two, one. And then after one, you can set this thing to trigger to start and then this trigger can be connected to the start button here and then all the cars or all the people that's running in the track can go 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 and at the end you can put a laser and a photo transistor or you can put something else which will trigger the stop so in this case you can put you can connect my circuit here you can connect this where I connected the start button you can connect this where I connected the stop button so in this case we, we are taking time of one car. So one car can go past here. It's going to go past the first one. When it says three to one, the timing starts. And then when it goes past the second one, the timing will stop. And then it's going to store the value. Then you can take down the readings. And then you can reset it. So another car can carry on doing the same thing. So it's going to say three to one. It's going to trigger the start, but, uh, the start input. And then it's going to set... It is going to set the buy table. When it comes here, it's going to reset the buy table. So it's going to stop the counting and store the value. Thank you very much for watching this video. And if it opened your mind, or if it helped you in a way or another, or if you enjoyed it in your leisure time watching YouTube videos, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. I will try my best to upload more of these project videos. Ponga, can you please off the light so we can see the display clearly? You see, as you can see, this thing is like really beautiful in the dark. My phone is not that professional. I'm using a normal Samsung J1 phone, so the video quality is not that good. But let's reset it and let's see. You see, it's, it's like bright. It looks nice. We should make this project if you have time. It's a lot of time consuming and a lot of good planning. Oh, and we can even, let's check, let's compare the timing. Konga, let's compare the timing here with your phone's timing. Okay, let's uh, reset this thing. And then when I say put your phone here, just put it in the range so you can see. Uh, yeah, there's Ponga's phone. And then when I say three, two, one, he started a bit late. But you can see this timing, it's like, it's corresponding with this timing. And because I'm using a triple five timer circuit on the light, please. Because I'm using a triple five timer circuit, the timing won't be stable all the time because increasing temperature and decreasing temperature will change the output frequency of the triple five timer circuit and then the timing will differ. So let's just stop this thing. Let's just stop and then reset, reset. So the timing will differ all the time. So I put a potentiometer here to control the output frequency of my timing. So as you can see, Ponga, can you please off the light? As you can see, when I off the light and I start the timing, I can make the timing either go faster or slower. You see, I can, that's slow, and then I can make it go fast, fast, and that's like even getting faster, it's getting faster, and then I can control it with this pot that I have. So I can control the output frequency, as you can see, I'm increasing there, I'm increasing, so the output is getting faster and faster. You can see now it's very fast. So let's just wait until it counts until 100. So you can see it counts until 100 and then it resets back to 0 and 1. But if you want a stable counting, you can get, uh, I don't know, you can use a microcontroller to clock it, to, to clock the circuit instead of using a triple five timer circuit. Or you can use, I don't know, you can use a frequency generator or you can go and buy something, some device for clocking. 
and you can use maybe 100 hertz for clocking or you can use 103 because there might be some losses in the circuit for the frequency. But thanks once again for watching. And as you can see, I can control, I can make the counting slower. You see now it's counting slower. So I can adjust it to work together with my stopwatch on my phone. Bye. Enjoy the rest of your day and your life.